I played 100 days of Stardew Valley on Stardew's tiniest farm. Hello everyone, it's Geobug back with another 100 day video. I'm very excited to share this with you. It took me a long time to make and longer still to put it out. But let's get started with our goals. First goal is to get the deluxe barn, then the deluxe coop, the horse stable, and to get level 10 farming. I didn't want to set too many goals, I wasn't sure how it would play out. But without further ado, let's get started. So starting off on day one, we get kind of a look at the farm here. Not much else to this other than just a little bit to the left. We got our parsnips planted after clearing out all the debris. And then we go ahead and make a chest, of course, and we're going to keep that off the ground and leave ourselves as much space as possible. And then, of course, we have to give a daffodil to Caroline because we're going to want to be friends with her as soon as possible. Speak to everyone we can. Buy a whole bunch of potato seeds. We're going to be trying to grow as many of those as we can right off the bat. Then we head out and we start talking to the other people around town and meet as many as we can today. We can't meet everyone on this day, but we do try to meet everyone that we can. Then we head to bed for the night. Day two, we get those potatoes planted. And then we had an artifact, so we stopped by to give it to Gunther and help him start replenishing the museum. Of course, you know we have to stop by Willy's and grab the fishing rod. And now we're going to spend a whole bunch of time fishing. Don't be confused, I am using a fishing mod. It eliminates the fishing game and just auto-catches everything, so things are going to be a little easier for me. Another daffodil to Caroline. We want those tea saplings as early as possible. And then we, of course, spend more time fishing right into the nighttime. We do get a really nice treasure there. We get a small glow ring and a diamond. And you know we're not going to pass those things up. Get rid of that bait for now because we can't even use it. Equip our glow ring. Happy us. So we get level 1 foraging, level 1, 2, and 3 of fishing right on that first day. Day 3, more fishing. It's a rainy day. So we're going to do some fishing right here and try to get a new rod and stuff. Then we're going to, of course, shop, or shop fish for catfish. Excuse me, wrong word. And we spend all day fishing there too. And we go to sleep for the night. We get level 4 and 5 of fishing and we're going to click Fisher for 25% more. Day four, we start off with our daily tasks like watering the plants. That's going to be very common in this playthrough. And then we're going to drop off our diamond, topaz, and this ancient doll we found. On to Willy's and we're going to sell what we have. Say a quick hello to Caroline. And then we treat ourselves to the bag on day four. I'm not sure I've ever gotten the bag that fast that I can recall anyway more potato seeds for us and then more planting and of course more fishing we're gonna be doing a lot of fishing it's a good money maker this early and with this mod it helps a lot we get super lucky and not only do we get a diamond but we also get the rare treasure chest and of course you know we're not gonna pass that up right there I got confused and forgot that I had the new bag so we, uh, we lost a fish there, but that's okay. It's worth it for the treasure chest. Level 6 fishing that day. And look at this nice bit of profit we make because of that treasure chest. 5,000 on those guys. Next day, we scare off some crows while we pick our parsnips. Finally get that level 1. And we grab some cookies. Into the mines. Then more fishing. We didn't make it very far in the mines, but we wanted to use this nice rainy day we've got to get some more catfish. Get another catfish and another level up. Back into the mines, because why not? We're collecting a lot of stone too, because I know we're going to need it. Especially to build those buildings. We do make it to floor 10 and we get a femur, which is a club weapon. And it'll definitely serve our purpose over that rusty old sword. Then we pass out, because we just kept going. But we do get that level 1 farming so we can make a scarecrow, and level 7 fishing. Clint stops by to give us the recipe for our furnace, of course. And we make one to start off with. 
you'll see me move our furnaces around a whole bunch because just trying to get the layout of this farm you can see there's not even a greenhouse on this farm so it's pretty tough we do also get lucky with an ancient seed so we'll be grabbing that recipe very quickly and there it is of course you know we have to spend some time chopping down the trees it's a good thing they auto grow back or this would be considered deforestation we're gonna go ahead and throw our ancient seed down water everything else we have and then of course more fishing it's our primary source of income for a little while we get a lucky with a little bit of iron ore can't turn that down and then we finish the night fishing on to day seven more watering and back into the mines We do make it to level 20, and we get a regular glow ring, so we're going to switch that out for our little glow ring. Then we try to do some fishing, catch a ghost fish, and we get level 1 combat. On to day 8, more watering. Like I said, we're going to be doing this a whole lot. Eventually I'll just start kind of skipping it, but... We do stop by and give Caroline another daffodil. And then we drop off a red scroll to Gunther. Then we speedily chop some trees and gather some forageables. Moving on, we finally construct our coop. Fastest I've ever gotten a coop. You can see me struggling to find a good place for it. Eventually we, we do get it right here in front of the cave. Of course we have to leave a walkway. And ultimately that is where we decide to move it. Thank you very much, Robin. Moving on, we decide to try to uh, get as much copper going as we can. So we can just kind of hang out and wait. And wait. And wait. There we go. And waiting for more. Level 2 foraging that day. Day 9. Let's go ahead and water some more crops. We don't do that very often, do we? On to Clint's. We can finally upgrade. So we go for our pickaxe first. Get deeper in those mines. And you guessed it, more fishing. All the way through the entire day. Hey look, we finally got one. And we pretty much just finish out the night that way. We're so close there to, to level 8, you can see down at the bottom left, and we finally get 8, so we decide to go home. We're going to throw all that in the bin, as well as our beach forageables. Put everything away for the night. And then we, uh, we go ahead and we call it a night. level 8 fishing that day like we mentioned get the worm bin I don't use the worm bin but it's there day 10 we can adopt our cat now we actually decide not to adopt the cat because there is no water bowl or anything and I felt bad so we start to gather our potatoes and we move on to chopping trees of course another common thing we do and we actually decide to call it a day because our energy is bad, but we get level 2 farming and level 3 foraging. So we're, we're shooting up those levels. Once again, one of our goals is level 10 farming, so we start shooting those up pretty fast. Of course, we accept the quest for Robin's missing axe, grab a couple of these parsnips that were in the ground. And then once again, we water everything. Moving on, we decide to start putting some paths down just to try to get things looking nice. I really wanted to make this farm look nice. I uh, kind of wish I had some more time. But then we buy some chickens and we're going to name them Tommy, Chucky, Phil, and Lil. One of my favorite shows, adult or child. So uh, leave a comment, make a guess. What are those from? Also, we get the cutscene with Vincent and Jass, so that's cool. We pick up our copper pickaxe. 
and uh, we buy some more potato seeds and some grass starters. Another gift for Caroline. We're going to need a lot of those grass starters, by the way. Plant more potatoes. Potatoes are and fish are our lifeblood right now. Catch a nice carp. We go and say a hello to Emily. Grab a couple of beers. And we're going to give that to Shane. Then on day 12, we've already made so much money that we can finally get the cave. This is the fastest I've ever gotten the cave, too. I'm, I'm becoming a better player at this game. We give our chickens some love. And then we fish some more because it's a rainy day and you know we got to get those catfish. And we get another treasure chest and another diamond. What are the odds we get that same, same set? So another five grand for us will be very nice. And of course we sell off our fish to Willy while we're at it. We're going to go ahead and grab the iridium rod now, because why not? We're going to have a soup. It's a rainy day in spring, so you can guess what we're going after. And I gotta say, I love the auto catch for this. We wait very patiently. It takes a while, but we get a carp. So we gotta try again. And no joke, on that second try, we have the legend in our grasp. So a quick thumbs up there, and then a level 9 fishing that night. We also sell that bad boy off, and he gives you a nice 14,000 for that. On top of that 5,000 treasure chest, we got nearly 20,000 gold that day. So, very lucky for us, because it was the day before the festival. So we're going to buy a whole bunch of strawberry seeds. Honestly, I, sh I wish I could have bought more. That's the first time I've ever been able to buy that many strawberry seeds, but of course we have the small farm, so really no room. Then I kind of shop around and I just look at stuff and decide whether or not I want to buy anything else. We do actually buy one of each seasonal plant just for the fun of it. And then of course you know we have to win, because we always have to be Abby, and I want my straw hat. Then we spend the night planting our strawberry seeds. Strawberry seeds are going to be a big factor in us raising our farming level as well. So then we got to feed the chickens on the next day. Give them all the love. Pick up our eggs. And then you know we have to build a silo because we're going to need that for the feeding of the chickens soon. Not a whole lot of space for the silo. I've seen some beautiful things done with this farm. I, uh... I didn't have a plan going in, so we just kind of fumble around until we find the right spot. And we just kind of put it right there for now, and we can always move it later. We go for the steel pickaxe upgrade, steel pickaxe upgrade, excuse me. And then of course, some more catfishing. <laughs> Throw that algae away. And we also get level two mining that day. We did hit up the mines just for a few minutes, nothing important, nothing worth seeing. Moving on to day 15, one more gift for Caroline. We're getting ever closer to those tea saplings. So close. Another rainy day. We got insane amount of luck with the rainy days this time through, so we're getting as many catfish as possible. We did get level 3 farming that day as well. Some of these days are going to go by quick because a lot of them had very, very little interesting things happen, sadly, so. Day 16, we head into the chicken coop to find that our chickens are very peeved with us. We have not fed them in a day or two because of all the rain, and uh, we are going to need to get some hay. So we go through the forest and we grab a whole bunch of berries just for something to eat. Then we stop by Marnie's and grab a bit of hay so that, of course, we can feed the chickens now. We give the gang their meal, so hopefully they won't be so sore with us tomorrow. Stop by Clint's, grab the steel pickaxe. We begin to head out, but then we remember, hey, let's come back in and 
get our copper axe now. So we drop that off back over to Caroline for another gift, another chat. Let's see how close we are. And there it is, two hearts. So the very next time she is in her tea room, we will go see her. Back into the mines for some bug killing. And we decide to pass out. Level 2 combat that day though, so we did a, lot, a whole bunch of fighting in the mines. Day 17, our potatoes are ready, so we're going to grab all of those. Chickens look happy with us this time. We decide to move our chest inside, or at least put a chest inside. Then we grab some more forageables, lots of berries around. Always keep a stack of berries, because they're excellent for your energy. And we're just kind of strolling around for the day, for the morning. Into the mines. And uh, we're finally into the dark mines, which is the worst place to be. So right here, we get to 39, but we couldn't find the ladder. So we just make a staircase to 40 and we get our slingshot level three mining that day because we we shot through a whole bunch of levels we shot through like 10 levels or so i think something like that so we did a really good job made a bit of money on to day 18 let's grab our eggs we're starting to get a whole lot of eggs now grab the copper axe from clint then donate to the museum we'll look at all this stuff we got from geodes we're going to get a nice reward or two out of this. Yep, I was right. Two rewards. Three rewards. I was right and wrong. We do get another furnace finally, but we decide to move them. We weren't quite liking them there, so we're going to put them in the house for a little while. Bit of rearranging. Right there in front of the fireplace. That looks nice. And then, of course, we make a couple more as well. Back into the forest for some tree chopping before we get a little too tired. And then we go to sleep, and it's day 20. We have some cauliflower that have that's become ready. So that's always nice. Couple days left on those strawberries, so we're going to water them. And then we can finally meet Caroline in her tea room. So we get that lovely cutscene. We do skip through it, but it is a delightful cutscene. If you've never seen it, check it out. On to the town. We say hello to Jody, And we give her the cauliflower that she requests. You always gotta have your, your one cauliflower. We finally head back into the mines and look at all of this iron we found on floor 41. It was a very lucky floor that day. Decent luck day as well. A whole bunch more iron. This was a very fortunate iron day. We make it to floor 50 and we get some nice tundra boots. So we're just going to throw those on and we're going to be doing some new boot goofing. I like to call these boots the Ugg boots. The boots with the fur, as it were. Whole bunch more iron. Blow up some slimes while we're at it. And we get level 4 farming that day, as well as level 4 mining. Good day all around. There's the tea sapling recipe, so we can start making some money out of those. And of course, we gotta make some mayonnaise machines as well. Our, uh, our income is gonna start becoming artisan goods based after a while, once we get some other things as well. So a whole bunch of mayonnaise machines. And then, of course, we have to fill them up as well. Moving on, we're going to tear down the old furnaces and we're going to find another place for them. Still not the best place. We'll move them again later. But we do go get the steel axe. And then, of course, more fishing. We're very close to level 10 now. Another beer for Shane. We decided that we were going to start working on Shane. I had a personal goal to marry Shane this time around. I've never married Shane, so... That's who we went for. And then of course we had to remember to water the strawberries. But on to day 21, back into the mines, we get level 60, and we got that 
weapon that was terrible, but we also get to level 70 and get the Master Slingshot, which is always wonderful to have. Back out of the mines, we head home and get level 3 combat for the night. Day 22, our strawberries are ready. Very lucky day there. Steel Axe is also ready. Finally, we can chop those trees a lot faster. Of course, you know we have to head into the secret woods. Normally, I cheat my way in, but I didn't do it this time. And we gather a bunch of hardwood, of course. Then we decide to move the shipping bin. I didn't know you could do that before, but I found out you could, and I did it. We click the Tiller Profession, and we get level 4 foraging. We got a whole bunch of money that day as well. Day 23, we sell those strawberries to Pierre. We go chop a whole bunch of trees with our new steel axe and gather all the forageables. I love when the butterflies come out of the trees. I think that's always really nice. We also decide to plant some trees out here. No particular reason for this location. I just had a bunch of seeds and said, you know what, let's go ahead and throw them down. Then we go home for the night and move on to the next day, day 24. Water those strawberries. Cut some more trees that are around town because we need the wood. Then we buy some seasonal decor at the, uh, the dance, the spring dance. We ask Shane if he wants to dance. Alas, he denies us, so we actually try to go home, but we can't, so we stick around for the dance, and then we go to bed. Day 25, we gather our eggs, put them in the mayonnaise machines, check on our chickens, back into the mines. Let's see how far we can get. We get to level 80 this time, and we get some dark boots. So we're going to switch those for our boots with the fur, sadly. Moving on, we head on over to Joja, and we're going to do the Joja run this time around just to save time. So we buy our membership. We can't buy any upgrades today, but we'll do that another day. We stop by and give Shane a beer, and then on our way home, we actually have a cutscene with Shane where he shares a beer with us at the docks. Or, I guess that's not the docks, but the pier at the little lake in the forest. Day 26, our strawberries are ready for their second harvest. Then we also go into the cave for the first time ever. And you can see it's just been amassing an entirely huge amount of fruit. So we're going to grab everything that we can there. We go give Demetrius a strawberry because we were feeling magnanimous. We also had to speak to Robin, so I figured while we were there we would do that. We give Robin her lost axe finally. Then we go sell all of this fruit to Pierre. And that's a lovely bit of profit there. We upgrade another tool back over to Morris. And we are looking what we can buy. And of course, you know, we have to go mine carts first because we want to get around town. Here's Shane. Have a beer on us. We won't tell Morris. He can't see you from there, can he? Another cutscene with Shane where he's passed out. Then on to Robbins to construct our barn. We just kind of put it right there for now and we'll fix it later. We're going to tear into some rocks and skeletons. We do have a mallet now. We got a mallet at some point. And we're just, we're just tearing through this onslaught of skeletons. The real bummer here is I came in here to look for the skeleton sword. Morris and his boys fix up the minecarts. And then we get level 6 farming, which is really nice. We get sprinklers and level 4 combat. On to day 27, we head into the mines. And once again, we're hunting for that old bone sword. We do find a couple of skeletons, so we're going to clear the way. And we get very lucky, and we get our bone sword, so happy us. Now is also a good time to remind everybody, if you like the video, li uh, click like and subscribe. And of course, we're going to go ahead and equip our bone sword. Moving on, we decide to try a hand at new paths, just trying to make things look nice. We get level 5 mining and go for miner for more ore. we move on to day 28 we stop by the museum first thing and we drop off a couple of items 
a nice dwarf scroll and a fire quartz. Move on over to Clint's to grab our copper hoe. Then we stop by Shane's to drop off a beer. Back over to our farm. Uh, I was trying to prep the farm. It actually didn't really end up doing any good because most of that goes away, but that's okay. Make a little bit of profit on the last day. And then of course we're gonna move on to summer. So day 29, we clear out all the old strawberries. We start getting the field ready and lay down our sprinklers. We, of course, move on over to Pierre's and we buy some melon seeds. I couldn't quite decide how many melon seeds I wanted to buy. So you'll see me just kind of buy five at a time for a minute and then go back for some more. Then we also buy some gold ore because we're going to need that. And we just didn't feel like going to find it. Then back into the mines, we start mining for some... Uh, stone because we're gonna need a lot of that and then we swing by and give Shane another beer make him happy and of course we go to sleep for the night day 30 reworking the paths again I could not quite get this just how I wanted it but we go back into the mines we make it to floor 90 and we get the obsidian edge which is a very exciting much better weapon a little insulting that it happened a couple days after we got the bone sword we were looking so hard for but I'll take what I can get then we prove our worth with our new blade by slaying lots and lots of monsters. We got we got a lot of monsters. That floor was overrun and then we ended up dying. On to day 31, we start off by catching a nice octopus and some more fishing. Then we go buy some cows for our barn that is finally finished and we're going to name them Gone Kilawa, Leorio, and Karapika, and if you know what those are from, leave a comment down below. We're going to go ahead and head into the secret woods. We're going to grab a whole bunch of hardwood and fiddlehead ferns, because they were just sitting right there. We also fish up a nice wall basket. I've never gotten that before, so that was nice. We say hi to our new cow friends, and we pretty much call it a day. Day 32, we're chopping wood. Once again, lots of wood, lots of stone this run, upgrading all the buildings. We also catch a nice pike, and we get the broken trident and a diamond. We don't need the broken trident, but that's always a rare find, so it's fun to find. We also get the milk pail, so we can start milking our cows, and some of that wood was for the bridge at the beach. So of course, you know, we forage and then we also grab the crimson fish, another legendary fish. We're going to sell those things off. Nice forageables that day. And then some more fishing up at the lake just for some money and maybe some lucky treasures. Level five foraging that day, we go with Forester. Level 10 fishing, of course, we go with Angler for that 50% more on the fish. <laughs> A nice haul that day. Moving on to day 33, we finally make it to floor 100 and grab our delicious, delicious star drop. You found a star drop, your mind is filled with thoughts of farming. Maximum energy level has increased. Always a good day when you have a star drop. Then we decide to fish for, um, we, the red snapper, and we actually get lucky with another broken trident and a diamond. At this point, I had decided to try to catch all the fish if I possibly could. It wasn't a major goal, but it was just something I was trying to do for time to kill. Back into the mines for more stone. And then we get level 6 mining and level 5 combat. We go with fighter for that extra damage. We decide to break open a whole bunch of geodes because we had a whole bunch of geodes. And we get lucky with a dwarven computer. Then we just take a take stock at all the 
things we've gotten so far. We decide to go upgrade to the gold pickaxe. And then we head back into the woods for some more wood. That was a funny phrase to say. Give Shane another beer. Day 36, into the cave again. And once again, a massive haul of fruit. We only check the cave a handful of times through this playthrough. I do try to check and see if I can get a fish pond on here. I really wanted a fish pond. But uh, we actually did not have the room for it without getting rid of our plants. So that was a shame. We fish up a nice lava eel and then back over to Shane for yet another beer at work right behind Morris's back. On to day 37, back into the secret woods for more hardwood collection. And then we go into the house. We do some rearranging because we want some chests in the house up to the railroad tracks to get some more fiber and then day 38 we're checking on all the animals another thing that becomes very routine animals and watering plants and the like we do catch shane over by the glyphs in a bit of a drunken fit here he just kind of passed out says our name and we Moving on, we fish for catfish in the secret woods pond. You can catch catfish there in the summertime during rain. We also get level 6 foraging. And move on to day 39, where Shane talks to us about what happened the night prior. We just hope he gets some help. We tell him we're happy he's still here. We go ahead, we drop off a fiddlehead fern. We didn't have anything greater to put in, but the governor actually did not hate it. It was a pretty fine soup. Very pleasant, he says, so that's always a win. I put all of these lightning rods out here just to try to get them out of the way, but the very next day, day 40, we decide to move them back because I figured they probably wouldn't do any good keeping the lightning off of our plants if they weren't on the farm. So we just kind of put them up here, and we'll actually have to move them later because they get in the way. Back into the secret woods pond for some more catfishing. Don't worry, if you didn't know you could catch catfish in this pond in the summertime, I didn't either. So there's a tip for you. We go pick up the gold pickaxe from Clint, and we sell off all of our fish to Willie. We do a bit more fishing because I saw some bubbles, and we get a nice iridium level super cucumber. You know, we're going to sell that off. Day 41, we get some pepper poppers from Shane, a whole bunch of batteries. And of course, we get our melon crop up. And you can see there we got to level up, so that'll be on to level 7 for us. Sell off the mayo and the melons for a nice bit of profit. Over to Robin's house to upgrade our house for the first time. Then we buy the bridge with the remaining money, so we'll have the quarry next. Then we decide to buy some sunflower seeds. This is a mistake. I should have bought them from Jojo where they are cheaper. But when I came to Pierre's, it wasn't my intention to buy sunflower seeds. I was just looking and made a last minute decision. So of course we go ahead and we get those planted. And then on to Clint's to upgrade our trash can to the copper trash can. Back over to the beach for some nice fishing. And then we watch Morris and his gentlemen fix up the bridge to the quarry. There's our level 7 farming. We get the loom and some quality retaining soil. Day 42, we put the battery in the secret location to start the key quest. Over at the quarry, we're going to clear it out so we can start planting some trees once we're ready. Then down into the mines for some monster slaying fun. Over at the hot springs, we're going to take a nice soap. Don't do that very often. Then we decide to fish up the Vista painting, which of course we do. Everybody knows that's my favorite painting. Day 43, we get one of our ancient fruits, so we're going to put that away. And then we head over to the quarry to start planting some trees. Then we head back into the mines to start farming, th farming things like fiber, things like that. And then we have a nice large iron ore vein which is always a great sight to see we fish up a ghost fish we were looking for the ice pip but a ghost fish is fine then we put some paths down around the trees with whatever we happen to have around day 45 we're shifting some things around the house again 
Still trying to get that uh, decor looking just the way we want it to. Get that table looking just right. Over to Clint's, we're gonna grab our copper trash can. Back down to the mines because we need a whole bunch more stone and gems and whatever else we can find. We do find this nice item slime and we get a nice steel falchion there as well. Of course, we're going to take a look and I was just really taking a look to make sure everything was worth the switch. And of course, we ultimately decided that of course it is. But then on 110, we get the steel falchion, which was pretty insulting, so I threw it away out of anger. Then we decide to finish off the night by putting our furnaces in the house. Day 46, we buy a bunch of hay for our animals so we don't run out anymore. And then we finally get our stable, which I was really excited about. I love getting the horse and running around as fast as possible. So we head on over to Clint's for the steel trash can this time. Head on into the barn to feed the cows. Then we make a whole bunch of tea saplings. And we sell all that stuff for the day between the mining and the tea saplings. We get 42,000 gold. Uh, an amazing amount of profit. Day 46, back into the secret woods for some more fishing. More catfish and wall baskets. One more beer for Shane, right in front of Morris. Makes me laugh every single time. Of course, you know, we have to chase the train, but it didn't do any good. There was nothing there. So we decided to go to bed for the night. And as you can see, we're starting to make good profits every day. More home renovation until I get it looking just the way I want it to. Then we need to name our horse because the stable is ready and we name him Hank. I watch a lot of King of the Hill, so that's where that name came from. We happen to catch Shane walking, so we give him a beer then. And then we go upgrade to the gold axe. Finally, the trees won't take so long. We finally decide to treat ourselves to the large bag as well. Back on up to Robbins, we finally go for the big coop. We are well on our way to completing our goals. Thank you again, Robin. Then we catch a bubble spot, so once again, you know we have to grab that. We get lucky with a sturgeon and a rare disc thing. And there's our ice pip. We finally got that as well. We start trying to fish for the stonefish, but we just never did get lucky. We never do get the stonefish. So we just head back to bed for the night. Day 48, we get the strange bun recipe. And Demetrius wants us to hand him a melon. So we go ahead and we just take that straight on over to Demetrius. We already saved one from the crop. Gather that nice 550 gold, head on over to the museum to donate an anchor we found. Back into the mines, we're blowing things up and gathering everything that we can. We finally make it to floor 120, which means we get the nice skull key. So now we can go to Skull Cavern. We're, just, we're starting to fix up the paths over here where we're planting trees, and we get level 7 mining that day. Day 49, our sunflowers are ready to go, so we're going to pick all of those up. Back over to completely fix the paths and make them all un uh, unified. And then we sell off all the plants and stuff that we have here. We go ahead and we decide to buy a bunch of wheat seeds because you can get hay when you farm them up and they only take a couple days. We grab our gold axe from Clint, and then back over to Marnie and Shane's, we see another cut scene from Shane there. I don't care for Marnie in that particular scene, she's kind of rude. But we're going to go ahead and buy some ducks, and we're going to name them Mabel and Dipper. Yet another one of my favorite shows. Of course, we have to plant the wheat seeds, and then back over to the forest to chop some more trees. We always need as much wood as possible. You can never have too much wood in Stardew. Give Shane another beer, and we get level 7 forging that day, so now we can finally make the tree fertilizer. 
Finally day 50, we're halfway through. We have a good collection of animals and our farm is starting to look pretty nice. I'm very excited at this point. We head back into the mines, find a nice jade there, kill a slime or two, and just start farming everything we can. Floor 81, always a good place to find fiber, floor 81. Another tip for you there. That tip comes courtesy of GamerGar. Check his channel out if you haven't already. Level 6, day 51, we make a preserve jar just simply because we can. And our first cheese press. Then we go ahead and make a whole bunch of tree fertilizer and we start throwing that down. One more beer to Shane at work. And we're finally at level 8 hearts there, I think. We're just close enough. We get a nice treasure chest with an emerald and a diamond. We make another cheese press and we go ahead and put those inside the barn this time. Day 52, we start off by finally paying for the bus. So that'll be exciting when we start going to the Skull Cavern, back into the Secret Forest for some hardwood, and to the regular forest for regular wood. And then we just call it a night. Not a whole lot of action that day, but there's our bus getting all fixed up. Day 53, our wheat is ready. You can see we're getting lots of wheat and hay. Down into the mines, floor 21, another place to get lots of fiber. 81 is better, but 21 is good too. We head on over and we meet Sandy for the first time. We buy a whole bunch of beet seeds because we're going to need those for the key quest. We decide to hook a sandfish and then down into the mines just for a little bit of trouble and fun. We're going to fight off a whole bunch of mummies and we get lucky with a hole there. And it falls seven floors, so that's always good. I like when we get the, the big floor numbers, but we do end up getting taken out. At level 31, we didn't lose almost anything because of the good luck day. We finally get level 8 farming, so we get the kegs. In day 54, we accept the quest from Mr. Key to get to level 25. And then we really didn't do much that day, our usual farming stuff. So we skip on over to day 55. And right there, I already achieved the quest even before we got it. So I got the 10,000 gold the next day. Right here, we decide to go with the big barn, so we're going to upgrade our barn now. We also go ahead and buy the telephone so I can start checking prices from the house. More house rearrangement. And then we head on into the mines. We're looking for copper and, of course, topaz and anything else we can find. And then we're going to spend the night sitting in front of the furnaces getting our copper bars all made up. Head on to bed for the night before we pass out, and then we make several tappers, five to be exact, and we're gonna go ahead and put those on our trees. And I actually make a mistake right here. If you can tell me what it is in the comments, I'll give you a thumbs up. We also get the Shane cutscene where we get the blue chickens, so I had, naturally I buy a couple of chickens in hopes that they'll be blue. We name them Angelica and Susie. You get a 25% chance that one will be blue, and we get lucky, and both of them are blue. I don't know if you caught it right there. You might have to slow it down or pause it. But we do plant another ancient seed down and give it a little deluxe grow. Duck egg over at Gus's, and we're going to hide this little dude in here. I think it's funny because he looks kind of creepy, and he's just hanging out back there. We do buy the bouquet to give to Shane, and we give it to Shane. We have eight hearts with Shane, so... He didn't know we felt that way, and he's really excited to be with us. And we just call it a day there. Day 57, another ancient fruit is ready. So we put that away and go chop down some more trees. Then we decide to make a couple more cheese presses. We're getting enough milk now, we can do that. Finally, we get to plant our beet seeds. And then we're gonna throw some speed grow down on those as well. Back over into the desert, we decide to fish for the scorpion carp and we do get it. And then back over to the quarry, we decide to chop some trees down because we needed some more wood and these were readily available. Then, you know, we gotta head to bed for the night. Day 58, we accept our first quest of the fall. 
and then we decide to put some fishing pots down, some crab pots, excuse me, so that we can start trying to catch some other fish. At this point, I was still trying to catch all the fish. Just wasn't working out quite well for me in some spots. Then we are in the mines harvesting bugs. We're going to want those bug guts. Level 8 mining that day. Now we can make big bombs. We check our cave again. Another nice haul of fruit. Then back to some more fishing. Then we decide to go into the mines and try to fish for some lava eels. We do get one, so that was very lucky. I was going to try to fish for lava eels for money, and just because we needed one, but we only got the one. Day 60, we start off by our usual chores of petting the chickens, checking the eggs, all that stuff. We check our crab pot bundle. We got a bunch of fish we didn't have. We started to, decided excuse me, to start fighting off some dust sprites. And that was pretty much it for the day. Day 61, we move on and our, our beets are ready. So then we grab our mayonnaise and eggs. Head on over to Mayor Lewis's to put the beets in his fridge per Mr. Key's request. And then we go on over to Pierre's to sell a whole bunch of stuff off. Yet again, a wonderful little profit there. Then we're going to buy a whole bunch more wheat seeds. We're just going to kind of stock up there. Then we get the wheat seeds planted. Wheat is a real lifesaver for me this time around because we were having trouble with all that hay. Uh, and right here is where we make the mistake. We planted pine trees. We did not plant the oak trees. So that was my fatal flaw. If you guessed it, you'll get a thumbs up in the comments. But we do get the right ones planted and fertilized, as well as some hardwood from the mahogany trees. On to day 62, one of our preserves is ready. And we also make our first phone call to Robin. We also decide to do some more fishing just for the sake of it. And then we put, we move the crab pots down to the beach because we found everything that we could from the river. Another beer for Shane and more bug killing because we're going to want those guts. I'm trying to give those to Willie. We needed an eel, so we went to the beach to catch an eel real quick while we got it, we had a chance. And then we went to sleep. So day 63, the rest of our beets were ready. And then we decided to plant the sweet gem berry. We had just enough time. We go ahead and throw those in. And I'll be honest with you, I don't even remember if we actually finished that quest for Willy. I think that might be the last time we dropped those off. But we do go hit up Clint for a whole bunch of geodes, and you can see we're getting quite the collection. We do pay for the greenhouse. We don't have a greenhouse, and you'll see what that looks like soon when they're trying to work on that. Back into the mines for more bug killing, and right here you'll see that nothing is actually happening. This is them working on the greenhouse, so don't be confused if you use this map. On to the next day, our wheat is ready, so we're going to get that and all that hay. We grab Linus's berry basket he's asking for, then we decide to get a bunch of pumpkins because we'll need one of those for Caroline, and then they're just good money as well. A bit more wheat, too. And then we decide that we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to catch the legendary fish, the angler fish here. And of course, we do. As well as a, a little bit of copper there. Get those pumpkins planted. And then we're going to put down a whole bunch more furnaces and head to bed for the night. Day 65, we're going to gather all of the copper that we just made. Evelyn's going to stop by and give us the recipe for gardening pots. We stop by and give Linus his berry basket and back into the mines for some more monster slaying fun. Level 7 combat from all that monster slaying fun. And then on to day 66 we find another huge iron ore vein. Very lucky with all the ore veins this playthrough. And then we head home and we just kind of sell off all the goodies we got from the mines today. Six thousand gold from that, not a bad haul. On to day 67, some of our wheat is ready, but not all of it, so we're going to go ahead and collect what we can. 
then we want to make those garden pots so we're going to go ahead and fire up a bunch of quartz you need refined quartz for the gardening pots so we sit around and wait for those then we finally make our gardening pots we make 20 full gardening pots and we're going to fill the house with them too we head on over to the desert and we feed the skeleton his yummy food buy a whole bunch of star fruit seeds for the pots as well as the deluxe speed grow and then of course we're going to get those planted as well and then we're going to head to bed for the day on to day 68 we add another item to the list of morning chores which is watering our plants we fill up our water can at the sink if you didn't know you could do that another little tip for you Then we decided to go to Pierre's and buy some yam seeds after we finish getting all the wheat that we left behind. And of course we're going to get those planted as well. Level 9 farming today. Very excited by this. We get the seed maker finally. Iridium sprinklers. Day 69 we start off by watering our plants. Such as our normal routine. Loving all the animals. Getting everything ready. Feeding them and all that sort of thing day 70 we actually go buy a whole bunch of hay because we ran out there day 69 and we decide to buy a goat and name him twilight twilight is the name of one of the main characters from spy family the anime so check that out it's very good then we decide to go ahead and put our tappers on our oak trees because they're finally ready we head into the quarry to get our scythe normally i would wait to the very last day to do that but we actually kind of needed it this time around so we end the day at level 8 foraging. Day 71, we decide to make a skull cavern run and we get to floor 17. We get a dark cowboy hat as a treasure. Down on this floor, we find a prismatic shard, which I'm always happy to find. That's our first prismatic shard, so you know what we're going to put that towards. Uh, but we decide to dip out and go home before we end up dead and losing our prismatic shard. Day 72, we get a nice little cute call from Vincent. I always love this call. It looks so nice with that new portrait too. Emily stops by to let us use her sewing machine. And then we have a couple of ancient fruits ready. So as always, we'll put those away for later. Sturdy Valley Fair today. So we win first prize, the 105 points. Then we're gonna gamble all 1000 stars away. Fingers crossed we get green. And we do. So awesome there. We don't waste any time. We go straight over and we're going to get our next star drop. We need that energy boost. Filled with thoughts of farming. We head to bed for the night. Day 73, our pumpkins are finally ready. So we pick those up and then we plant uh, our leftover wheat seeds down. Then we're going to drop this golden mask off at Gunther's. And then we're going to take our prismatic shard over and get our galaxy sword. I can't believe it took me that many days to get it, but we certainly do get it and I'm very excited. We found the galaxy sword and then back down into the mines we find another dark cowboy hat, lucky us. So we end the day and it's level 8 combat for us that day. We get explosive ammo, which is day 74. We head on over to Clint's to bust up a bunch of geodes. We had a whole bunch of Omni Geodes. And we decided to go ahead and drop that stuff off. Then we click this by accident, panic for a minute, put it back where it belongs and move on. Then we head on over to Joja Mart to talk to Morris about getting the panning. So we pay the money for that. He'll fix that tonight. Another beer for Shane at work because it's hilarious. And then look, we get two more large ore veins one copper, one iron. Very, very, very lucky with the ore veins this time around. I was very excited. We do finally get the dwarf scroll we've been looking for for ages. The green one. And then to finish off the night, Morris and his boys fix up the rock so that we can start panning. Level 9 mining. So we finally get the crystallarium. The next day, we get a visit from Gunther to let us know that 
We have the key now to the sewers. We can go down into the sewers now. We stop in on to town and Morris is throwing us a nice party. We skip it and we head on over to Caroline to give her her carving pumpkin. Donate to the museum our scroll to get our dwarven translation guide. So now we can talk to the dwarf. Which is always nice. Heading back on up towards the mines, Willy stops us to give us our panning pan. Then we go ahead and we upgrade the coop to the deluxe coop. Well on our way to our goals, guys. Of course, you know we got to put the Joja Cola machine in the house and move on to day 76. Willy wants to show us something, so we're going to go visit him soon. Pick up all of our wheat. We make a couple of seed makers. And we place them strategically so we can walk in between them to get to our other chests and the phone and such. Then we put our five ancient fruits in there to make more seeds. We stop on over to see what we need from for the ship to get to Ginger Island. And then we sell a bunch of stuff we just had laying around to Marlin for some money. Day 77, our star fruits are finally ready. So we get those made up, then we make some more seeds so we can refill the planters. And then of course, you know, we gotta water those and finish our daily tasks. Our oak resins are finally ready. So we're gonna make five kegs and then some starfruit wine. Another beer for Shane. Are we getting ever closer to marriage? I think so. And we call it a night, day 78. We finally go meet Krobus and I absolutely adore Krobus's portrait on this mod. And I will put that link in the description for you guys if you're interested as well. We decide to scroll through and just see what he's got for sale, and we eventually land on the Void Egg. We go ahead and buy that. Shane's hard at work, so naturally he needs another beer. And we are best friends now. We get a nice achievement. And 9,000 gold to finish off the day. What a, what a wonderful end of the day. Day 79, we accept the cleanup quest. We head on over. We go ahead and put the 5 batteries and the 200 hardwood, but we don't have the 5 iridium bars yet, so we'll get that eventually. Day 80, Shane invites us to the Tunnelers game, and you know we're going to accept and then stand there in awkward silence for just a moment. Then we made some more uh, garden pots, so we're going to plant those in the house. Then we find a dinosaur egg down in the Skull Cavern run, so excited thumbs up there. We're going to put a whole bunch of Iridium in. And go to sleep for the night. Day 81, we head straight on over to Old Master Cannoli. Give him the sweet gem berry, because we gotta have our star drops. I'm cuckoo for star drops. And as always, it reminds us of farming. We go ahead and drop the five iridium bars off, and Willie and Rob will fix that overnight. Drop our watering can off with Clint, and then we stop here to talk to Shane about going to the tunnelers. We just skipped that scene. And then we talked to Rasmodius about getting into the Witch's Lair. On over to the Hot Springs, we decide to fish for trash. This is my favorite place to fish for trash. I find it comes up a lot easier. We get another Vista painting, which I am not complaining about. And of course, we get all the trash and drop it off. And now Linus will be happy. Willie and Robin fix up the boat for Ginger Island. And on day 82, we take the trip on over. Love this little dinosaur over here in the corner. It's one of my favorite little details in the game. And then, of course, you know we gotta spend the whole day looking for golden coconuts. Walnuts? Why did I say coconuts? Golden walnuts. There you go. A couple locations for you. If you're interested in me doing a video about the locations of all the walnuts, drop a comment down below, and maybe we can do that in the future. I'd love to be helpful. So we get the turtle out of the way to head over and over to the house, but we do end up passing out. On day 83, we head on over to get the dark talisman out of the bug layer. Then we decide to fish up a void salmon. We also try to fish up a void mayonnaise for emolution. I mean the henchman. Of course he takes it and we can get into the witch's hut to get the magical ink for Rismodius. We drop that off so that he can give us the book that allows us to get Junima huts and the clock and the obelisks and all that stuff. On over to get our golden pumpkin from the festival. And then our starfruit wine is ready today as well. So we're going to sell that off and make a lovely little profit. 
Moving on to day 84, our copper watering can is ready. And so we also go to Ginger Island and we start prepping to start growing some ancient fruit. I know we won't really have time, but it's fun to just prep and do it. We repair the bridge so that we can then free the professor in a moment. Look at those birds working hard. Aren't they something? There we go, Professor. You come on out of there. Fly free, Professor. Then we pass out on the docks. Next day, day 85, first day of winter, we marry Shane. Isn't that lovely? And then our void chicken is hatched, and we are going to name it Luffy. I was on a real One Piece kick while I was filming this, watching a whole bunch of episodes, so that's why we named it Luffy. Moving on, we're going to go ahead and finally put the dinosaur egg in the incubator as well. And then we're going to water our star fruits. As you can see, Shane's room is blocked off. We go and catch Krobus sneaking around the bushes, so he gives us the magnifying glass for secret notes. On to Clint, we have a golden coconut, so we get a golden walnut from that, which is really nice. And then we had an artifact trove that gave us nothing. More digging around for walnuts. We solve the puzzle pretty quickly, and then we finally get enough to build the house on Ginger Island so we can sleep there now. We make it to floor 5 in the volcano and buy the warp totem and the ginger ale recipes. Day 86, we plant a whole bunch of terror roots because we had a whole bunch. We decide to fish up the lifesaver. It's a special little spot right here. Then our lightning rods uh, are hard to get to because of Shane's chicken hutch so we move those we also move the barns around and stuff just to try to make things look nice and we head to bed to the night for the night day 87 we're checking on all of our chickens of course making mayonnaise all of the general stuff we do then we head on over and get our first gem put down on ginger island we give shane a beer before bed and in bed because he stays in bed all day we head on over to Ginger Island. We start prepping for when we have our ancient seeds and fruits ready. Then we call it a day. We move the bed close by so we don't pass out. Day 89, we messed up there, so sorry about that. But day 90, we have another gem ready on the podiums there. And then we also get the galaxy sword enchanted with the bug killer enchantment. So we were excited about that. On to Clint's, we get the golden coconut helmet. And then our star fruits are ready at home, so we're gonna grab ahead, go ahead and grab all those. Then we have a whole bunch of mayonnaise machines to put down, as well as some more cheese presses. We put a couple kegs back at home for the star fruits. And you know, we gotta make some more star fruit wine. And some seed makers for more seeds. Level 10 farming, we're gonna go for the artisan, of course. And then day 91, we get the Deluxe Barn, finally. And that's all of our goals completed. We catch a couple of fish because we found a fishing spot. We also go ahead and we catch the Mutant Carp and the Slime Jack right there at the end of the day. Day 92, we're doing some of the same old, same old, and that's pretty much it for the day. So we just kind of skip that day. Day 93, we get a whole bunch of taro roots, and we fish up the frog hat, one of my favorite hats. Took us forever, by the way. We also drop off an amethyst on one of the pedestals. Day 94, we fix up the beach area, and we get the gourmand statue. Of course, we gotta water our star fruits before bed. Head to bed, day 95, we're gonna get the glacier fish. And then we're also going to buy a shed, just for the kicks. Just because we have the space. Then we head down into the mines just to keep fighting and gathering stuff. Place our Gourmand statue there. And we got level 9 combat. Day 96, we're going to grab some rabbits and we're going to name them Zoro and Usopp. Again, from One Piece. Then we're going to give our galaxy sword a little buff with a diamond and then we just guessed on that pedestal and got some more walnuts played some darts with the pirates did pretty okay but then our lizard d 
decided to hatch, so we're going to name him Sanji for the last one there. Then we just kind of mess around with paths and stuff. We don't keep that. We end up changing it again. Day 97, though, some more star fruits are ready. Then we decide to start moving stuff into the shed. And then we call it a day. Whole bunch of money there from that star fruit wine again. Day 98, we head on over and break some geodes that we had lying around. We also sold off a whole bunch of stuff, or will. We fixed the carrying system, the fast travel system there on the island, and then on day 99, we get the rest of our star fruits and we put everything else in the shed. We also upgrade our house one last time. We'll never actually see that, but we did do it. We also bought a mahogany dresser and a stone frog, excuse me. On day 100, we get that 100 last day. We get those things placed and we kind of make things look nice. Of course, you know I have to buy my suits of armor. It is a staple of this channel. We also buy the stone parrot and then we, we spend some time placing those things around just to make the farm and the home look nice. So that is it everyone, 100 days on Stardew's tiniest farm. It was a lot of fun, if not a little monotonous at times, but we did do a lot of things. I can't believe I even made it to Ginger Island. I didn't think I would honestly with how small the farm was and money making and stuff, but we did get all of our goals. So the deluxe barn coop, uh, level 10 farming and the horse stable. So that was actually a lot easier than I thought it would, would be. And uh, we did it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please stay tuned for more 100 day videos and other videos of that sort of thing. Please leave comments. I love interacting with the comments. I try to interact with all of the comments and like them and everything. Please like the video and please consider subscribing if this is your kind of content. And until the next video, uh, have a wonderful day or evening and we'll just catch you in the next one. Thanks everybody. Bye bye.